This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, and especially at the moment, I do hope you're well. Now, uh, the other night I was doing what I suppose many of us guitar players tend to do, sitting in front of the TV with a guitar on my lap, just kind of noodling aimlessly. And just this little passage of chords tumbled out of my fingers, and the wife looked over at me and she said, um, is that Top Gear you're playing there? Jessica, you know, the Almond Brothers tune that they use as the theme for that show. And I said, well, no, but it does sound close, doesn't it? Um, so I thought, I'm going to do something with that for this weekend's jam. So I did. Um, inevitably, it did end up sounding a bit Almond Brothers-ish because of the uh, the chord sequence, which you'll hear shortly. Uh, but also, inevitably, my fingers developed their own particular brand of Tourette's and went all kind of twiddly-widdly in a couple of places. And... Um, it just sort of struck me when I listened back to it that I thought, okay, imagine an alternative universe where instead of joining Deep Purple, Joe Satriani joined the Allman Brothers. Um, and uh, a tune with a guitar solo like this may have come into existence. Here's the solo, and then there's a brief explanation about what I was doing and how I was doing it. Okay, let's take a little bit of a look at the kind of shenanigans I was getting up to in that solo. Um, as always, let's begin with the chord sequence. And as I said earlier, this chord sequence was the, the kind of spark of the whole idea. Just sat strumming away on the sofa while watching TV. I came up with this. That uh, thing there. And it's kind of got that sort of... Almond Brothers Jessica kind of feel to it or it, it, it struck me as being a bit like that and what's going on is basically an A chord then I go to a D chord but keeping the A bass note then a G chord but again keeping the A bass note there now here's the thing we've got a D, a G and an A chord happening there and there's only one key where those three chords all occur together, and that's the key of D. So we're in the key of D, okay? But we're kind of focusing on the A chord, which is the five chord in the key of D. And when you focus on the five chord in any key, you are in the mixolydian mode. So this is A mixolydian. Okay, key of D major, but refocus it towards the five chord, which is A, gives you the mixolydian mode. And then the second part of the chord sequence kind of does the same sort of thing, but in a different key. This time I go to a D chord, then a C chord, or C add nine, G, and then back to D again. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, we're actually in the key of G because there's no other key where you will get a G, a C, and a D chord happening together. But once again, we're focusing on the five chord, which is the D, and that again gives us mixolydian. So you'll hear if I just play through that uh, sequence, it sounds quite happily kind of centered on that D chord. Like that, okay? 
So key of G, focus on the five chord, a D, and you're in the mixolydian mode. And here's the thing about mixolydian, okay? It sounds bluesy, okay? Anytime you want to write a chord sequence that has a kind of a slight bluesy um, edge to it, just use the mixolydian mode. Or in other words, pick a key and then just kind of go to the five chord in that key. You know, just imagine basically doing this, this standard little three chord trick, like that. And then there's your one, there's your four, there's your five. Make the chord sequence focus on the five chord and it's going to give you that mixolydian bluesy kind of sound. So what do you play over the um, mixolydian chord sequence then? Well, as I said, it sounds bluesy. So just use your standard uh, stock in trade blues licks. You know, uh, minor pentatonic is good if we think in terms of the... Um, the A mixolydian section, I'd be thinking in terms of A minor pentatonic. Like that, you know. All of that kind of stuff. And then, of course, you can mix in the major pentatonic scale. You've heard me talk about this in videos for a while now, this mixture of major and minor pentatonic scales to give you the, the hybrid scale, as it's called. There's A major pentatonic. There's a minor pentatonic, mix them together. Like that, very, very kind of bluesy, kind of mixolydian-y kind of sound. And that's just mixing those two scales together. Then when it goes up to the D mixolydian um, section of the tune, I just do exactly the same thing, but in D. So I've got like D minor pentatonic and D major pentatonic. Those kind of licks and maybe a couple of just pure old, old fashioned, old school D minor pentatonic licks to. I do that a couple of times in there as well, I think. And that's largely what I'm doing and then just thinking about resolving to chord tones. I mean, there's one, like the main kind of melodic part of uh, the, the thing where I start off um, is basically. You can see there, that's just based out of a, a, that little A major triad shape there, you know, and kind of going into, um, you know, the all of the kind of hybrid pentatonic sort of stuff coming out of that. Uh, there's a couple of places in the solo where I do get a little bit twiddly and widdly, and I'll just kind of give you a brief rundown of those at the moment. Uh, in the... Um, a mixolydian section of it. Remember how I said A mixolydian is just a D major scale? Well, or, or d the key of D major. Well, obviously there's a D major scale there, you know, the kind of uh, d <laughs> Do, Re, Mi kind of thing like that. And I can sort of continue that up into uh, that there. I'm just taking a, a bit of a lump out of that scale, really, and going... <laughs> And I'd kind of slither around that using a few hammer-ons and pull-offs. Like that. It sounds more impressive than it is when you get a bit of speed on it, um, which I'm struggling to do today because I've got a, a blood blister on my little finger. I was taking the bins out earlier and got it caught in the gate. So apologies for any um, lack of pyrotechnics in this demonstration. Um, the, the other place where I go a little bit widdly is when I play, again, coming out of like that A minor pentatonic sort of uh, idea. Um, I play like a, a kind of my way of bluffing a little bit of sweet picking where I'll um, play that little kind of run there, that straight out of A minor pentatonic, C, D, E, and then I'll tap the uh, A note at the top there. Uh, so I get, and then just kind of come back down, go up, go up, up that rather, and come down it. And then just hammer on my way down a, an A minor arpeggio, and then slide up to a C major arpeggio like that and that's the only actual bit of sweet picking in there and i learned that from that very famous exponent of sweet picking mark Knopfler. that's that same shape that's in the 
the Sultans of Swing solo, but just transposed from A up to C. So that little kind of run goes. Whatever I do after that, I can't remember now, but that's basically how I'm uh, just throwing in a little bit of um, twiddly, flashy stuff just to kind of spice things up a bit. And that pretty much is everything that I was doing in that little solo. Hope you learned something from that and um, yeah, see what you can make of it. And as always, just give me a couple of days to get busy in Guitar Pro and I'm going to get all of that tabbed out for all of my wonderful, fantastic Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. I really do appreciate uh, the support you're giving me. Very, very grateful. Uh, that'll be up on my Patreon page in the next couple of days along with uh, that clip that you've just seen there of me playing and explaining the solo and a jam track to play along with as well. Um, if you want to support the channel, as I say, you can join the Patreon. It's only $3 a month and you get all of the... Uh, little resources that I, that go along with these YouTube videos. Uh, you can also click on any of the other links down there in the uh, description box you can buy some of my wife's lovely jewelry or not not she's not selling a jewelry she makes jewelry uh, you can buy some of the jewelry that me missus makes or you can uh, get a fret zealot tuition aid there's the discount code on screen there purchase link in the description and um, fantastic little device i use it all the time in the lessons and uh, it's very very helpful in helping to build up that muscle memory of remembering where to put your fingers because you can visualize it on the neck and that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it. And don't forget, as always, the regular appointment on a Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. There's a live stream goes on on this channel where it's just basically a bunch of old curmudgeons like me and the rest of the lads who all just sit around and have a beer and a chat and um, talk about what we've been up to over the, the, the past seven days. It's Saturday now so just make put a, a date in your diary for next Friday and uh, every Friday after that and I hope to see you there and with that I'll big, bid you all a good day and say thank you for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now folks